welcome back everyone it's me Matt hope you're having a wonderful day and thank you so much for joining me on today's video just a friendly reminder that if you want to be notified of any upcoming videos in the future please click the little bell by the subscribe button so the M1 Abrams is such an incredible main battle tank one of my favorites of course in the western world and honestly is something that I've always taken a strong fascination in watching because of its capabilities but more so the fact of it still testing its limits in the boundaries of modern armored warfare the M1 Abrams main battle tank and its variants are some of the most highly regarded tanks of the modern world, however it's interesting to note that when upgrades come out for this tank it seems to be like world changing news. The Challenger 3 certainly did not get the same press or attention that of the Abrams did recently, and of course the western power of the superpower world in the United States, when they get new upgrades, of course their main battle tanks are obviously going to get quite the precedence over everyone else when it comes to these sort of changes. The irony is that the M1 Abrams is upgraded each and every time, it does bring some confusion when a lot of people don't quite understand the different capabilities and variants of the M1A2 Abrams and its SEP variants. This mainly comes down to the fact of when people think of change, they think of visual change or things that they can see that look different on the main battle tank. And with the M1A2, it's very difficult sometimes to see those changes because of the embedded systems or internal equipment, or if you're just not aware of how the tanks actually operate. For example, the Challenger 2 is going to be moved up to the Challenger 3 and we'll get a completely different main gun. That is a very big, obvious change that is going to change the way in which the hull and the structure of the turret looks. So it's quite easy to know that that is a changed main battle tank. With the Abrams though, it's a little bit more cryptic. But that's what's more fascinating than anything else though, is our huge curiosity in this, and almost obsession, especially of course, with the western world for this tank. Now each and every nation has its own personal favour of course, when it comes to tanks, if you come from certain countries you're going to have a somewhat biased opinion towards each main battle tank, including obviously myself with the Challenger 2 and soon to be Challenger 3. And of course my American viewers strongly oppose me saying that the Challenger 3 will be better than any M1A2 and its variants. Just kidding folks. But hey look, we're not playing the which is better tank game today, as you know I don't really talk about that on my channel, but what I do want to discuss is what is it about the Abrams that continues to interest us and continue to keep us on the edge of our seats when it comes to upgrades. It's almost like a obsession to know what's the next big thing coming for the Abrams. How many channels have you seen recently in probably the last two to three years that including myself focused on this particular upgrade package for this tank more than any other. There's not many out there, I mean Red Effect does a fantastic job of looking at the Russian world of main battle tanks which personally I don't think there's enough um, viewing on them and of course myself with Challenger 2 and Challenger 3 but this tank truly does take the forefront when it comes to any discussion about upgrades or its future and it's really really interesting, it's almost like a phenomena to see. One of the biggest reasons though in the fact of the new upgrades packages being so interesting is it tends to be because it's the unknown and a lot of people are excited for the new M1A2 SCP V4 variant of the M1A2 upgrade package now known as the M1A2 C SCP V3. Now if you know much about the Abrams you would know that the M1A2 SCP V3 configuration really did feature some quite advanced new technological changes with new communication suites, fire control systems, increased lethality capability with new sighting system upgrades and on top of that it boasted better fuel efficiency including some upgraded armor packages and even with general dynamic land systems pumping so much resources and money into this main battle tank it continues to this day to retain a lot of its original design language from the baseline tank. One of the most interesting areas for the V3 package was for its active protection systems and there's not a huge amount of discussion about this for the future package for the V4. Delivery of the last active protection system trophy occurred at the end of 2020 and was equipped for the Armored Brigade combat team of the US Army and US Marine Corps in 2018. Of course this is prior to the US Marine Corps disbanding their main battle tanks. The US Army ordered 336 Abrams main battle tank systems with a budget equivalent to more than 400 million US dollars using the Trophy APS from Leonardo and Raphael systems and began delivery in September 2019. But we haven't heard a huge amount of these systems being actually put onto the tanks into full capability. The Trophy APS is designed to intercept and destroy incoming anti-armor missiles and other guided rockets with a shotgun style blast which prevents projectiles such as shaped warheads hitting the side of the tank which was very prominent with the M1A2 SCP V2 main battle tank variant. Of course Tusk also came into that with troops needing to have something that worked well in urban areas. 
but the M1A2C or SEP V3 version had a whole host of other capabilities, such as looking better for target acquisition, the electronics warfare system, and the Duke V3 active protection system which was designed to prevent roadside explosive devices such as IEDs. Interestingly, we don't talk much about the boring stuff or the less sexy things that the tanks were getting too. Some of the big parts were capability of maintenance, with the vehicles being given a health management system and LRMs, or line replaceable modules, which basically are a module set up for the vehicle's infrastructure that could be changed in and out quickly to prevent downtime of the tank. The APU was given improvements such as fuel efficiency, complementing the beautiful Honeywell 1500 gas turbine engine, which was given also a multitude of different upgrades, mostly software. This brought the M1A2C V3 into the forefront of our minds and we all got very excited seeing the V3 and we're now like, wait a minute, there's another one coming? Yes, the M1 upgrades are not stopping there. With the V4, America is continually pushing for upgrades to this tank, and why you may ask? Well, we're seeing that Russia and China's main battle tanks are getting the same kind of upgrades that are necessary to keep up with the modern force, and it's quite obvious it's a preventative deterrent style way of fighting. That means no rounds are actually getting fired at one another, it's just macho who's bigger and who's better. Make something more powerful and more brutal, and eventually someone's gonna do the same thing and try and trump, so to speak, your military equipment. And a side note, the money that is spent to do so nowadays with financial budgets is eye-watering, <coughs> F-35. But the new and exciting M1A2 SCP V4 package will boost another huge amount of special upgrades. The V3 production will transition to V4 configuration in late 2023, and the V4 upgrade is scheduled to bring the first tanks into the field by 2025. The V4 will introduce a wide array of new advanced sensors and cameras as well as new ammunition, data links and other technological changes. Of course, as I said before, we don't expect the V4 version to come out with double barreled cannons and huge, you know, active protection systems located all over the damn thing and a massive engine hauling out the back. It doesn't have to look different. It can be technology that is embedded in the system, but that's why it's fascinating when people talk about Abrams upgrades. They think, oh, you know, it's going to get this new fancy turret. It's going to get, you know, a wider wheelbase or better tracks, whatever else it may be. You're not sometimes going to see these changes. Of course, like anything, details remain very, very challenging to get actual true information on right now. But you can safely say that I'm sure active protection systems are something that are going to be very, very strong on the forefront of the designer's wish list that we may not see a huge amount of information on because this is pretty strategic planning or, say, tactical planning when it comes to that kind of technology because of contracts, security reasons. Reasons, of course, working with Trophy from Israel, there's some serious uh, security or national security concern there. So they're not going to share a huge amount of information about active protection systems, even though we already know it's probably going to be the case. Also, big shout out to those War Thunder players who keep releasing restricted content about the Challenger 2 onto forums. Absolutely awesome, by the way. I'm not sure how that's happening, but it's like the third time, I think, that people have been trying to do that. Maybe they've just not got the message yet. Um, anyway, some of the changes include uh, an advanced multi-purpose or APM 120mm tank round which will consolidate four rounds together and they are the heat or high explosive anti-tank, the MPAT, M1028 or 1028 canister round and the M908 obstacle round. And you're probably wondering why would you want to combine all the rounds into one? Well, programmable ammunition gives the user of the tank options and options that do not require a ton of space. Also, it provides options that change the way in which you can actually fight the battle. Being that I am an artillery gunner, programmable ammunition is something I highly advocate for because it also makes everyone's lives a lot easier. You're not trying to adjust and calibrate and set up your rounds or your weapon system for that particular round. It's just programmable and instantaneous, which just really prevents a lot of also user error. Now, the different types of rounds with different variants make storing them challenging inside of tanks. There's not much room. And the less ammunition that you need to place in there, uh, the better for the most part, because it's less that is going to potentially get cooked off or destroyed within a breach of the hull or an engagement. Uh, you know, we talk about blow off panels, things like that. But also because the tank's primary focus is to knock out other tanks. And if you've got a ton of different rounds in there uh, to take out whatever you need to do, whether it be you know, punching holes through walls, etc. Uh, you're reducing the armored P-90 
piercing, fin stabilized discarding saber rounds. This gives the tank commander the ability to do just about everything they need to do, whether it be taking out small armored fighting vehicles, turning infantry into Swiss cheese, or blasting through McDonald's walls with one round, and it's game changing truly for the Abrams. Another discussion that's been going back and forth is the potential for the tank to utilize long distance rounds with wire guided missiles being launched from the tank. Of course, these are all just test capabilities right now and won't be going into full production until the testing that will be completed later on this year in 2022. Now, Army officials explain that many of the details of the next-gen systems for the future tanks are truly just not available for security reasons, but they did explain the lethality upgrade referred to as the Engineering Change Proposal, or ECP, which is centered around the integration of a higher tech third-generation FLIR, or forward-looking infrared imaging system, which allows the sensors inside the sighting system to engage targets more clearly. Rear view sensors and laser detection systems are also part of these V4 upgrades as well. Newly configured meteorological sensors will also give the tank a lot better anticipation and adaptation to the changing weather conditions or combat conditions for the gunners more quickly. The tank will also be configured with a new slip ring leading to the turret and onboard Ethernet switch to reduce the number of needed boxes by networking sensors to one another in a single vehicle. But once again, it reminds us, though, that tanks are never going to become obsolete for the foreseeable future, especially when you have to consider the amount of money, time and effort that is going into making these tanks keep up with different capabilities than are needed on the modern battlefield today. But maybe you can answer this question in the comment section below. Why is it that we are always so excited about the Abrams upgrades and its fascination behind its changes? We've all heard these changes mostly before, and it seems like they're just refining an already heavily implemented V3 system with some spiffy little upgrades. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, yes, the tank is getting major upgrades, but it's still the standalone main battle tank M1A2, and the packages that are being placed on there do truly change its capabilities, but we've talked about this many, many times on the channel, and we all see these different packages coming out, but just not gone into full-scale production used with the field armies. The unfortunate case of the uh, US Marine Corps losing their tanks took a big hit in the tanking world, and those Abrams do have to go somewhere. I think eventually we're going to start seeing the US Army taking full implementation of the V packages that exist, and maybe the V4 will be the one that the Army finally pulls the trigger on, implementing across the entire full board scale of the fleet. And it's a little too early to tell if the US Army is going to be actually using this package fully, but nonetheless it's still really, really interesting. In my eyes, we have to see the proof in the pudding, though, and if the US tankers are actually going to see widespread upgrades used on this entire fleet, then maybe the V4 is the time to do it. Guys, I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did, please leave me a like and also a comment. I'd love to hear your opinion on this main battle tank and its changes for the future, or any other tank for that matter. If you want to be, uh, again, notified of any upcoming content for my channel, please click the little bell by the subscribe button. Also, you can check out my link and description box below for any links supporting of my channel, including Patreon and PayPal. Thank you to everybody so much for supporting me on those platforms. I really do appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for supporting me financially. It does help me produce content for this channel. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you on the next one. All the best. Bye bye.